didn't really quite understand. I mean, again, I saw the pictures and I knew it was horrific, but I just didn't have that emotional attachment to why it was, it was so, so horrific and why my grandpa would talk about it so much. So then when September 11th happened, and then all of a sudden I went through those emotions, I, I realized something, that all throughout history, uh, those emotions are the same for people, uh, which, which was just kind of an interesting connection for me. So enough about that. Uh, it's important that uh, we uh, uh, thank, thank those veterans for serving. Um, I was deployed this time to the Middle East. And uh, what, uh, what I wanted to point out was there's a lot of countries in the Middle East. I can't really talk about some of the countries that I was in because the missions are classified. And uh, it's just one of those things that we, uh, we, we don't want people to know, especially our enemies, uh, even though they probably don't. But uh, I will tell you that I was in almost all of these countries. Okay? I had soldiers in all of these countries. I was, uh, I'm a command sergeant major, which is a mouthful of words. Uh, basically, I'm kind of like, uh, so if you're lucky, you have a really nice principal, but I, I'm kind of like a really mean principal to about a thousand soldiers, okay? And uh, I, honestly, I try not to be mean, but uh, the first time that they talk when I'm talking or something like that, then I have to be mean. But uh, no, I, uh, my job is to take care of those soldiers. My job is to make certain sure those soldiers have everything they need, whether it's food, they get paid, they have the right stuff to train with, the right uniforms, that their training is outstanding, so that when they train, they're actually learning things that will save their life and save the lives of other people. Uh, my job is to plan, to make sure that uh, when they go to a location, that they have everything they need to do their job there. And then part of my job is to go out and, and see them uh, where they're at and make sure that, that uh, they're doing what they're supposed to be doing and if they need any help, then I get them help. So I got to do a lot of traveling. Uh, I flew a lot with the Air Force uh, on big planes, C-17s, C-130s, Black Hawk helicopters, Chinook helicopters. Uh, there are a couple other planes in there, but uh, they all kind of blend together. At any rate, uh, our deployment was for about a total of 11 months. That was 11 months we didn't get to see our family. And that's a tough sacrifice. Has anybody here uh, had a parent that's deployed, been deployed before? All right, thank you so very much. I'm going to tell you something right now. That's tough, isn't it? And I, I think someday somebody's going to do a study and realize that the family and the children of those soldiers deployed <coughs> probably go through a lot tougher emotions than the soldier themselves or the Marine or sailor or airman. And uh, it, it's a very tough thing. What I want you to know is you're never alone. You've got a whole room of support uh, when, when, when those things happen. My, uh, my kids were, were very young when, when uh, I first deployed, and uh, it, it, was, it was harder on them than it was on me, unfortunately. And, and, but it tore me up knowing that. Knowing that. All right, next slide, please. So uh, I, I just threw some pictures up here uh, that you can look at. I uh, didn't want to ex explain too much, but it uh, 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 gives you an idea. That was a C-130. I uh, flew on those a lot to get to the different countries. By the way, our soldiers do amazing things. The coolest thing, the reason that I still serve today in the military is because uh, I, I work with some of the best human beings in the world. They, uh, they truly care about other people. When I see us going into countries, and again, I can't tell you some of the countries, but war-torn countries, countries where the, the civilian population, they don't even have a place to live. They don't have food to eat, and, and oftentimes they don't, they don't have the, the, the shelter, the food, uh, the, the clothing. Uh, we live day by day, and it's the saddest thing to see. And time and time again, our, our service members will do everything in their power. They give away their own stuff to, to, to these, uh, you can call them refugees, I guess, if they're actually in their own country, uh, to, to help them survive. And uh, it, it, it's, it's heartwarming for me. I see some of the, most, the, the, the kindest gestures uh, out of anybody uh, on, on deployments, and it's just, uh, it's very heartwarming. Uh, I will point out, so this was one of my teams. They were a radar team uh, in, a, in a country, and there's a dust storm coming on. That's why it kind of looks that way back there. So the Middle East, a lot of sand uh, and a lot of really fine dirt and powder. And anytime the wind comes up, all of a sudden you, you can't even see your hand in front of your face. But uh, that day was good enough to take a picture, and they were flying the Kansas flag in the background there. So I wanted to take a picture of them with the Kansas flag. Go to the next slide. 
Um, so here's just a, uh, again, I, I want to take a picture of some, some of the soldiers uh, that I get to work with. I got a picture here with the Marine, who's a good friend of mine. And uh, in life, you make a lot of friends. And uh, I have a lot of friends that I made going to school. And sometimes I don't see them for 20 years, and then I get to see them again, and it's so fun. Ben was a, he's a colonel now in the Marine Corps. And uh, as a music teacher, when I went to Africa for deployment about 11 years ago, I had really enjoyed uh, playing uh, music with other uh, service members that played music as well. Ben was one of those people. And when I was in a country called Kuwait, I'm in the PX and I'm shopping, I'm looking for shaving cream actually. And I look up and there's Ben. I hadn't seen him for 11 years. And so uh, we sat down, we had dinner that night. Uh, ben, ben is one of my closest friends. And I don't talk to Ben on a daily basis, but you know, we hadn't seen each other for 11 years. It was like we, we hadn't seen, it was just like I'd seen him yesterday. Uh, I, I have made so many great, great friends, people that I can trust uh, serving my country. So uh, then the only other thing I'll point out is uh, like the soldier on the end and some of these guys, you guys are pretty young, I get that. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty old, right? I'm, I'm 56 years old. But I had soldiers that were 19 years old serving with me. And I, those soldiers, that's, that's a picture of some of those soldiers that are that young. You that young. I, you guys that might be old, I don't know. But they're amazing, I call them kids. They're amazing kids. They may not come across like they know much, but when it counts, and they have to do their job. They 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 serve the United States very well, and, and I am proud of them. And it makes me excited about the generations that are coming up uh, in the United States. I I, am, I I get thrilled. That's why I love about teaching. I get to see the next generation of people uh, that are, are going to uh, be a part of this country. So uh, that's really all I have. Unless you have, uh, I, I can take some questions. Three questions. Uh, so if you'd raise your hand, yes, sir, in the back. should ask that. So just like you guys, you, you guys are always learning every day, right? And I, I guess something I forgot to say is uh, overseas, I was in Africa in seven different countries, and I was in, I think, nine different countries in the Middle East. Uh, I've been to several different countries in Europe. Uh, but the thing about the war-torn countries is those kids don't get an education like you're getting, okay? The only way they learn is if their parents teach them something or somebody, te there's not an organized school because it's too chaotic. And the one thing that they really, really want, you know, other than like, you know, they want food and water, but they want to learn. They would, they would sit and listen to us all day long if, if, if we wanted to, right? And so when, when I go to these countries, my, my heart always pours, pours out to these kids. They just, they just want to learn. They want to be here where you're at. And uh, when, uh, and I kind of got off track. What was your question? <coughs> oh, so I have to learn just like you guys. So I actually got a school coming up in December that I have to go to in Pennsylvania for the military again. Uh, so, uh, but that's only for a couple weeks. Uh, hopefully I never have to deploy that long again. Guys, thank you very much. You are now standing in the audience. Here's what I would tell you. I'll be around all year, except for two weeks in December. And uh, if you see me out on the playground or something like that, don't be afraid to come up and, and introduce yourself and ask me questions. Okay? Thank you.